God is so good to us, isn't he? Thank you, Lord. You know, sometimes in life you feel, you feel a little bit stuck, right? Um, how many of you know that in your relationship with God you go from faith to faith, from, from glory to glory, from, from grace to grace? And uh, man, as we seek the Lord, we're, we're going to grow in stages. Praise God. And, you know, oftentimes when you're seeking the Lord with all of your heart, sometimes you're going to hit kind of a brick wall. And um, it's, it's in those times that it's important that we embrace things like, like youth camp, um, our men's trips, uh, our, our women's trips. And because what that does is that, that just allows you to separate yourself from the world and just kind of shut everything off. Amen. We spend a lot of our, our life, you know, making money and, and going places and doing things. And, and that's fun and that's good. We should do that. But sometimes we just need to take a break and just put all of our focus on God. Amen. And that's what these youth camps for these, you know, our, our men's trips, our women's trips. It's just so we can kind of separate ourselves, And, you know, that, a lot, that helps you to, to get over that, that hump. Amen. Because sometimes in life you do feel like, man, I've hit a brick wall. I've, uh, I just, I'm seeking the Lord, but, you know, that helps us to get over the edge. Praise God and be all in for Christ. And I'm, I'm here to tell you, um, if, it, if at all possible, get involved in these things that we have going on because God has something amazing for you. And he still loves you even if you don't go, amen. And he's still got amazing things for you even if you don't go. But, man, there's just something about going that it just, it ignites your faith. It pushes you over the edge to, to just press into God like never before. So, um, anyways, I just felt, felt led to say that. I didn't plan on saying that, but just felt led to say that. So, how many of y'all are ready for the word today? All right, praise God. Well, well I'm ready to preach and the Holy Spirit's ready to minister to us, so uh, let's get started. Thank you, Lord. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this morning, and we are so honored and privileged to, to read your word, to understand your word, to apply your word. We thank you, Father, for, for loving us enough to show us the way. And we thank you that for whatever comes against us in life, God, we are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors in your love, in your word. So thank you, Lord, for equipping us. And, and, and this morning, God, we thank you that we are going to be even that much more ready for this world, this life. And what is thrown at us is, as, as Brother Doug said, Lord, to, you know, we're visitors. We're visitors. And we thank you, Lord, for equipping us to, to thrive here during our short time. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay, so uh, the, the title of today's message is Check Your Oil check your oil. And I'm sure you're wondering, what is pastor talking about? Check your oil. Well, God was, God was showing me something. And how many of y'all know that it is necessary for your car to have oil in it in order for it to run properly? Right? I mean, oil is, yeah, what? Oil is the main component that keeps your car running well. If you have bad oil, man, everything else is going to fall apart eventually. Amen? Um, so the Lord was showing me how, how his love is like oil to our lives as Christians. As servants of God, his love to us is like oil. We can't function without it. We can't operate without his love in our life. Everything goes back to the love of Christ. It doesn't matter how much you learn, how much you mature, how much you grow, how many times you've been... How many years you've been going to church? Amen. How many times a week you go to church? It doesn't matter how many people you save. It doesn't matter how many minutes you pray. It doesn't matter how many words you read in the Bible. If it, it, everything goes back to God's love. And, and if we've forgotten that, then we might as well just give up on everything. Because it all goes back to the love of God. His love is oil to the Christian life. Amen. How many of you know that, you know, in an engine, uh, there, there's, there's, multi, there's so many moving parts in an engine? And, and you know, all those moving parts, when, they're, when, when your car is moving, it's, all those moving parts are, are rubbing against each other, 
and, and that force of, of friction creates heat in the engine. Amen? And so what the oil does is, is it lubricates the engine, it absorbs the heat, and uh, it allows the, the, all those parts to work together effectively without overheating. Amen? See, I'm reading from my page because I'm not a mechanic, and I don't really understand much of this, but I wrote it down because God told me my love is like oil to your life, and so I was like, well, i got to search this out and find out, you know, the essentials of oil and, 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 and how it helps the engine and, and everything involved with it. So anyway, so just bear with me for a minute, but, you know, how many of you know there's many moving parts in our Christian life? Just like there is in an engine, many moving parts. And... Um, you know, just as an example, you know, we have to resist temptation. Amen? We have to submit to God. We have to be humble. We have to uh, be gentle. We have to talk right. We have to live pure. Uh, think right. We have to be diligent to seek the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, we, we have to persevere. Amen? We have to endure some things. Hallelujah. And, and we have to, you know, have that fighting spirit in our life or else the enemy is just going to, take advantage of us. He's looking for the weaklings. He's looking for the ones who aren't willing to put up a fight to take advantage of. And, and so th that's just a few. I mean, there's so much more moving parts in the life of a Christian. And sometimes that can get a little bit overwhelming, can't it? You know, exercising patience and faith and all this other stuff and walking around and living pure and, and thinking right. And it just it seems like a lot of pressure. It seems like a big burden. And let me tell you, it is apart from God's love. Because God's love is the oil that keeps us together. God's love is the oil that keeps our life as Christians running smoothly so that we don't implode, so that we don't get weary, so that we don't give up. It all goes back to his love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, the enemy is going to apply some heat and pressure to get you off track in life. He's going to apply some heat and pressure. And in 1 Peter 4.12, he says, don't be surprised by the fiery trials that are going to come your way. Don't be surprised by that. We're, we're going to endure some stuff. Satan is coming after us. Amen? He, we, the moment we put our faith in Christ, man, we've got a, a target on our back. I've, I've, I've heard a, um, Minister Andrew, Andrew Womack say that, you know, if, 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 if you're not experiencing any opposition, you and the devil are going the same way. Yeah. Don't be surprised when you're experiencing difficulties in life. Hallelujah. Your marriage is not always going to feel perfect. Don't be surprised. Thank you, Lord. Don't be surprised when your kids act, start acting rebellious. Thank you, Lord. Don't be surprised when you put on a few pounds because you're being neg negligent in, in, in your diet. <laughs> Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised if, if you get a bad report in your health one day and say you have a chronic condition in your body. Don't be surprised. I mean, this is serious. And you know what? Satan wants to steal, kill, and destroy you. He wants to take out your marriage. He wants to destroy your relationship with your kids. He wants to take your peace away. He wants to take your confidence away. Your confidence in the Lord. You can't have confidence in God if we're always feeling bad about this and that. And we think the Lord is keeping a, a tally of our sins and our mistakes. We can't be confident in God if we're living that way. Amen. Don't be surprised if, if Satan comes against you. But how many of you know that despite all the many trials, Jesus said, I have overcome the world and everything in the world that will ever test you or pressure you. In other words, Jesus is saying, I've been through the heat and I've come out the other side stronger and better and I am now at the right hand of God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We have these promises. When something comes against you, don't just lay down and say whatever the Lord's will is. He works in mysterious ways. That is Satan coming against you. Take up the sword of the Spirit, 
and fight back. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Many fiery trials. Hallelujah. But Jesus has overcome the world. Thank you, Lord. But what love does is love absorbs the heat. It withstands the pressure. And, and listen to this. Love keeps us passionate about the things of the Lord moving in the right direction. His love keeps us passionate. Because how I many you know, when, when you're battling, when you're fighting, you get tired. Yeah. Amen? Micah here used to do uh, MMA and, you know, mixed martial arts for those of you who don't know, right? And, and he still does. He still practices, but he hasn't, you know, fought officially, right, in, in quite a while. But he knows after the first round you go in there, you're fresh, you're ready to go. Man, you're, you're like, let's wrestle, let's swing, let's you know, <laughs> take each other's heads off. After the first round, you're, you're huffing and puffing. <laughs> you don't have as much energy. And that's how it is in the Christian life. You're resisting. You're fighting. You're having faith in God. You're being patient. You're being gentle. You know, seeking to live pure. You're seeking the Lord. You're doing all these good things. But if we don't have love, you will come to the end of yourself. And you will get burnt out. And you will be crushed under the pressure. And God is saying, my love is, is the substance inside of you that is so strong that it keeps you from being crushed by the pressure on the outside. Hallelujah. The love of God, his perfect, unconditional love that is not based upon how we feel or how we live, his love. His love gives us hope. Amen? It keeps us passionate. Otherwise, as I said, we'll get burnt out. And the reason that Christians get burnt out and they say that living for God is so hard is because they're trying to serve God with all these moving parts, trying to, trying to live and abide by all these different truths, and yet we forgot the main thing, love. Love. Somebody say love this morning. Love. Hallelujah. Let's go over to uh, Revelation 2.1. Revelation 2.1. Jesus is saying here to the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. He says, I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And, and you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not and have found them liars. And you've persevered and you have patience and have labored for my name's sake, and have not become weary. Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. We can do everything right, and, and yet without love. Man, verse 5, remember therefore from where you have fallen, repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove, our lampstand, uh, and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. Do the first work. The second works don't matter if, if you don't have the first works down, which is what? Love. Our first love. God is my first love. My wife is not my first love. My parents are not my first love. They're not the first ones who love me. They're not the first ones who found out about me. God knew about me. When he put Adam and Eve in the garden, before he put Adam and Eve in the garden, when he was out there hovering in the midst of darkness and nothingness, God knew about me. <laughs> and he knew the year I'd be born, the year I'd pass away. He knew everything about my life. Amen. He is my first love. And if I don't have that down, if I don't believe that, if I'm not convinced of that, it doesn't matter how patient I am. It doesn't matter how much I persevere. Amen? It doesn't matter how much I endure. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Because if I've forgotten my, the first works, my first love, I'm nothing. Amen? Do you, don't, don't you remember? Some of, everybody's in a different place in here. Maybe some of y'all have been born again, going to church for a long time. Maybe some of y'all you know, are, are, are pretty new, you know, serving the Lord for months, maybe a year. Maybe, are some, maybe you've recommitted your life to God you know, recently. I don't, I don't know, but I know this. Remember when Jesus was the main thing? 
Remember when it used to be all about Jesus? And not about us or how we feel. Or Remember when it was all about Jesus? Instead of being all about our needs and our wants and our desires. and We've got to get back to that where it's all about Jesus. Because I'll tell you what, when God is all about you, he's always been all about you. If I was God, I would have wiped out humanity a long time ago. <laughs> That's just how I am. <laughs> Having that much power, everybody would have been struck with lightning. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. But God's not like me. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Aren't you thankful for that? Amen. But when it's all about God, God's always been about us. Man. He's, always, he's always made a way for us. He's always looking for a way of escape for us. He's always looking a way to save us. He's always planning and scheming, how, how can I bless them even more? How, how can I get them away from this sin that is killing them? And, and how can I you know, get them into experiencing my life and my righteousness? And God is always thinking about how he can bless us. He's, he's always calculating and figuring out ways to, to just bless us. Remember in Psalm 23, where he says, when you make the Lord your shepherd and you allow him to actually guide you in life, he says, goodness will follow you all the days of your life. I mean, God is just looking for ways to get good things to us. But he's got to be our shepherd, of course. Amen? It's got to be all about Jesus. It's got to be about his love for us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So God's love is oil to our life. Thank you, Lord. You know, the, the, normal, the normal time span, I know everybody knows this probably, but um, the normal time span to change your oil is, is every 3,000 miles. And if you didn't know that, then after service, you need to go check your oil right, right away. <laughs> but, you know, every 3,000 miles, which is quite frequently, right, especially for those of you who drive long distances, maybe work in Austin, um, that's, you know, we're supposed to change our oil every 3,000 miles. So um, it just, it's a reminder to us. There's so, many, you, there's, there's so many comparisons here, but it's just a reminder to us that we need to frequently check our love walk with the Lord. Frequently. Because God's love is oil to our life. Amen? His love is what keeps us sane. It's what keeps us upright. It's what keeps us going. It's what keeps us strong. Because I don't always feel strong. I know, you, you know, you look at me as the pastor and you say, Man, Pastor Kyle is just the perfect husband and the, and the perfect father. No, I'm not. <laughs> I am not. And my wife would tell you. Well, she wouldn't tell you because she loves me, but because love covers a multitude of sins. But <laughs> Amen. Oh, man, Pastor Kyle, when he gets up there, he's just so anointed. He just knows to have everything together. I really don't, though. A lot of times I feel like Humpty Dumpty, and I'm just falling off the wall over and over and over. <laughs> Amen. But Jesus keeps putting the pieces back together over and over and over. You know why? Because I can't exhaust his love. I can't make him not love me. I can't crack myself open enough for him not to love me. Hallelujah. It's his love that keeps me together, that keeps me sane in this crazy world. Hallelujah. It's his love. And I'm telling you, his love should be your motivation. It should be your passion. Don't serve God because, you know, you have to or you need to. Serve God because he loves you. And I'm telling you, you go much farther with that. Let's go over here to 1 Corinthians 2.1. 1 Corinthians 2.1. And it says here, and I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except this one thing, Jesus Christ and him crucified. How simple is that? Paul, a man who, who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. Paul, a man who had amazing visions. And, and, you know, he didn't know whether he was in the body or out of the body. But he was just seeing amazing visions, amazing truths the Lord was telling him. And Paul had had probably a better revelation of grace than any of the other disciples had had of, with, with Jesus. Such an amazing revelation of grace. And, and Paul says, I know nothing except Christ and him crucified. How many of you know Paul could walk circles around us with revelation? 
Paul could make us look like idiots <laughs> with how much he knew about the Father and about the truths the Father has revealed to him. But he says, I know nothing except Christ and him crucified. God's love was the main thing. Because centered around the crucifixion of Christ is the love of God. That's what's put that plan into place of Jesus coming to take our place and die for us as a sinner, even though really he was a righteous man, but he died the death of a sinner, and he became sin for us. Hallelujah. Christ and him crucified. Verse 3, he says, I was with you in weakness and feared and much trembling, and my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Paul was a blessed, blessed man. And the reason that he was blessed is because he put the Lord first. It wasn't about himself. It wasn't about his reputation, how great he was, how much he knew, trying to make everyone understand how awesome he was and how used he was by the Lord. Amen. It was about God's love. It was about the crucifixion of Christ. He was always pointing to Jesus. Hallelujah. And we need to get back from that. Amen? We need to ask ourselves, have I gotten away from Jesus Christ and him crucified? Have I gotten my mind on too many things? Hallelujah. Sometimes we just add all these like programs to our life that we are not focused on the main thing, which is the love of God. Sometimes we can get so busy in our life with, you know, with our kids' activities and our activities and and our work that we, we forget about our first love. He's no longer our main focus. Amen? It's got to be about God's love. Otherwise, you're going to get burnt out. You're going to falter. You're going to wither away. Thank you, Lord. Some of you, this is really, you know, hitting home because you're like, man, I've experienced that. <laughs> I've gotten burnt out a few times. Amen? And some of you maybe haven't experienced that yet, and that's good, but I'm just telling you, it's all about God's love. It's all about his love. Let's go over here to 1 Corinthians 13.1. 1 Corinthians 13.1. He says here, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanking cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy... And understand all mysteries and all knowledge. And though I have all faith so that I can re remove mountains, but have not love, I'm nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. That's amazing. You know, the gift of prophecy and, and understanding and revelation, that that, those are all gifts of the Spirit. That's a gift of the Spirit. And God's saying, you can operate in all the gifts of the Spirit you want, but if you don't have love, you're nothing. Isn't that amazing? Praise God. God's love is so powerful. And I'm telling you, there's more for you. You have not exhausted God's love. You have not even begun to scratch the surface of God's love for you. You don't understand God's love by just somebody saying God loves you. Amen? Man, God, there, there are multitudes and, 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 and multitudes of levels of God's love and just that you can enter into. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, God has more for us. Amen? Oh, you can have all the faith to remove mountains, but if you, have, if you have not love, you are nothing. You know, uh, when I look up the Greek word, when it says, if you have not love, you're nothing, it's uh, the Greek word there for nothing is udais, udais. And I could be pronouncing that wrong, but I believe that's how it's pronounced. <laughs> Anyways, uh, udais, and it means not even one, not even one. See, we may think, Lord, I've done all these good things, though. Isn't that, doesn't that count worth something? Doesn't that mean anything? And God is saying, not even one. Without love... You can give your body to be burned, and it profits you nothing, not even one. You get zero credit. I mean, we're not walking in love to get credit anyways, but <laughs> it doesn't mean anything without love. Amen? Thank you, Lord. 
You know, it doesn't matter what we do apart from love. We are nothing. And let's, let's go to 1 John 5, 4. 1 John 5, 4. And uh, we're going to see this even more here. 1 John 5, 4. He says, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. This is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. We can have, and just like he said, you can have all the faith in the world, remove mountains. Our victory comes by faith. But guess what faith is based in? Love. Faith works by love. It says in, in, in let me see here, Galatians 5, 6. Galatians 5, 6. Faith works by love. Amen? Do we have that up there? That's okay. I've got it right here. <laughs> Let me read it word for word here. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything, but faith working through love. Through love. You can have all the faith you want, but it's not going to work apart from love. It's not going to work if you don't understand God's God's good will for your life. His good desires for your life. Amen? Faith is not going to work if you don't have confidence that God wants you healed. Hallelujah. Well, I have the faith that God could do it. See, that's faith without love. Believing that God can do something. He has the power to do something, but he won't do it. God wills not to do it. That is faith without love. Everybody believes God is powerful enough to, to heal me. But will he? See, that's faith without love. Love tells you yes and amen. Because all the promises of, Christ, uh, all the promises of God in Christ are yes and amen to us. When you know about God's love, you know that not only can he heal you, but he will heal you. He has healed you. Through the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Man, I pray we catch this this morning. God is stirring us up. You can have faith that God wants to restore or heal your marriage. But if you don't have love, you don't believe that he wants to. Thank you, Lord. Faith works by love. If you are not founded in love, your faith is not going to be effective or work for you in life. And we wonder, God, I believe you can. Why aren't you coming through for me? God says, because I, you need a deeper revelation of my love that not only can I, but will I. Thank you, Lord. Because God's will implies a choice. And God says, before you were ever born, whether you did right or wrong, I chose to love you. While you were a sinner, I chose to send my one and only son for you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. It all comes back to the love of Christ. We have nothing, we are nothing without his love. Love gives us purpose, and it makes sense of all the moving parts in the Christian life. Otherwise, we're just churning our wheels for nothing. Love makes sense of it all. Thank you, Lord. In other words, in 1 Corinthians 13, what he's saying there is there is no point apart from love. Amen. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 9.24. 1 Corinthians 9.24. God is so good to us. More than we deserve. He says, Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. Therefore I run thus, not with uncertainty, thus I fight, not as one who beats the air. 
Love gives us certainty. Love gives us an expected end. Hope. <coughs> Amen? Something to look forward to. I know God loves me, so I know the end is good. Because God's will is acceptable and good and perfect. Amen? But without love, he says here, you know, he want, Paul said, I want to run and I want to fight, not as one who beats the air. This is, this is what we look like, serving God without, w- without love. We're just beating the air, not accomplishing anything, not going anywhere. Amen? Sorry, it is really hard to move in this seat. I'm trying to, what? <laughs> Let me take this off now. <laughs> Praise God. I mean, it's, you know, there's no point. We're just beating the air. If we're not founded in God's love for us, it is the foundation from which we live <laughs> for the Lord. Amen? Let's go over here to John 13, 35. John 13, 35. <laughs> By this, the Lord says, all will know that you are my disciples if you do great works, if you pray in tongues, if you prophesy, if you do good things. Amen? If you give up your parking spot and you're parking the HEB to help somebody else out. (laughs) Amen? Not, Not by the good works, by the love that we have for one another. By the love that we have for one another. That's how they'll know that we're Christians. By our love. Hallelujah. Isn't that simple? And yet we overlook it so often. Amen? I have have it written right here. Love is our identity tag. Love, uh, without love, we're nameless and we're faceless. We have no identity in Christ without love. Praise God. We're just out there kind of just, you know, like a tumbleweed. Just wherever the wind takes us. We're nameless and faithless without God's love. Praise God. Now the Lord says that they will know you by the love that you have for one another. It's important that we understand that love is an action word. Amen? Love is not just something you talk about. Love is, 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 is power in it. It's an action word. Let's go over here to 1 John 3.16. 1 John 3.16. We're, we're nearing the end here, and but there, there's some... A couple good nuggets that I believe God wants to, to get to us. Uh, 1 John 3, 16. He says, Behold what manner of... I'm sorry, that's wrong. Here we go. By this we know love, because he laid down his life. Talking about Jesus' life. He laid down his life for us. And we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoever has this world's goods and sees his brother in need and shuts, and shuts up his heart from him... How does the love of God abide in him? My little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Thank you, Lord. That's where the power is at. Amen? He's telling us, I want you to love supernaturally. Don't just love when it's convenient. I want you to walk in a supernatural love. Amen? And as you just said there, love often requires, true love often requires a sacrifice, a laying down of something. That Jesus laid down his love for us, and that's how we know what love is. Love often requires a sacrifice. If, if you're not sacrificing or laying anything down, then you've got to ask yourself, is it, really, is it really love? Amen? Because love will often require you to walk contrary to what you feel. The main thing you're going to have to lay down is not possessions. The main thing you're going to have to lay down is pride. You're going to have to lay down your feelings. Amen? You're going to have to lay down the past. Bury it. You need, you need to finally, once and for all, you need to have a service for your past. A memorial service, a funeral service for your past, and lay it to rest. Because you're just carrying dead corpses with you everywhere. And it's weighing you down. Amen? Thank you, Lord. I see you coming, and you look like the walking dead coming towards me, you know? Just got all this dead stuff behind you. The dead weren't meant to walk. They were meant to be buried. So bury it. Stop walking with it. All that dead stuff, bitterness, envy, jealousy, resentment. So, so your parents weren't the greatest parents. So your parents weren't good to you. They weren't nice to you. They didn't raise you well. They were mean to you. They were horrible to you. 
Lay it to rest. You're not helping yourself by carrying that with you. Amen? Somebody say, well, Pastor Kyle, you have no idea what kind of parents I had. I don't. I don't. But he does. Amen. That's right, he does. And you have a choice to either carry that burden with you all your life for no reason. It's not going to do anything for you. Or you have, a, you have a choice to lay it down and forgive them in Christ. Amen. It's impossible. Lay down your pride. Amen? Amen. Lay down your self-importance. Amen. Lay down your feelings. Amen. Lay down, well, I feel like I am entitled to my pain. That's the problem. That's the problem. We feel like we're entitled to be hurt. Maybe you were in the world, but once you put your faith in Christ, there's a better way, and it's the way of love. Supernatural love. Godly love. Love that it exceeds our feelings. And what we have, ex- love that it exceeds experience. Thank you, Lord. And it's all, when you put your eyes on the cross, you can let go of all the dead things. Hallelujah. But you got to get your eyes on the cross. Christ and him crucified, that's all I know. Christ and him crucified, my first love. My first love. Everything else is nothing without my first love. You need, don't, don't, don't try to be strong enough and try to, well, I got to do this and I got to do that. An engine without oil is going to break down. You need the love of God to lay things down. To let go of things. God's love. Praise God. Praise God. Let's go to Luke 6.32. Luke 6, 32. Look at an example of love here. Jesus is, is talking about how we are to walk in supernatural love in the context here. And, and he's saying, but if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. Amen. You know, if you're just loving when it's convenient or loving when you feel like it, or that, that's, that's not love. The, the world walks in that. That's a, that's a human emotional love. And, and I'll tell you, that, that's going to wear out very, very quickly. Sure, you, sometimes you're walking in the greatest love when you least feel it. When you least feel it. That's when you can be walking in the greatest love. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's go to Romans 5.8. Romans 5.8. He says there, but God demonstrates his own love toward us. He didn't just talk about it. He was about it. Amen? He demonstrated it. His own love toward us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. It hit home with God. Christ, his one and only son, died for us. And God says, through the death of my one son, many more sons not gender specific, okay? Sons just and children of God. Sons and daughters. Hallelujah. More sons were, many more sons were added unto me, the Lord says. Because I laid it down. I'm telling you, if you would lay some things down, God would add so many good things to you. So many good things to you. You know, I saw um, a, a picture on Facebook, and, and is this, many of you have probably seen it, but there, there's this little girl, and, and she has this little teddy bear. She's standing up, this little girl. She has this little teddy bear in front of her. She's holding it, and Jesus is in front of her, and he's, he's knelt down on, on one knee, and behind him, he has this huge teddy bear behind his back. The girl can't see it. He has this huge teddy bear, and, and Jesus is telling the girl, uh, you know, it, it implies he's telling the girl, just lay it down, lay it down. Uh, let, let go of that little teddy bear. I've got something better for you. And the and little girl says, but I don't want to, God. <laughs> you know? In the picture, the little girl saying, I, I don't want to let go, but I really like this. I really love it. And, and, and see, that's, that's how we are with the Lord. We just think, no, God, you don't understand. I've, I've been living with this pain. This, maybe it's physical pain in your body. You got something wrong with your physical body. Or you've been living with, with emotional pain, with, with, with just mental torment day after day. Fear torment. You've been living it with it for so long. You're like, I don't want to let go of it. It's, I've lived with it for so long. It's a part of me now. It's my identity. And God is saying, lay it down. I've got something better for you. Amen? My, let my love become your identity. Hallelujah. We feel like if we're, if we're letting go of something, we're, we're missing out. 
that's you just gotta you just gotta trust God and say God loves me. If He's telling me to let go of something, it's because He loves me. It's not because He's mean and harsh. And remember the man at the parable of, of the talents, the 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 man who thought God was harsh. He just he did nothing. He just put his talent in 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 the sand. He didn't do anything with it. And God says, you wicked and lazy and evil servant. Now you're going to have nothing. And I'm going to give your talent to the, to the man who did something with it. See, when we picture God as this harsh, mean God just looking out to punish us or whatever, we're, we're not doing ourselves any favors. We're, we're harming ourselves. And we're keeping ourselves from living the best life that God has for us. God loves you. It's amazing to meditate on that. God loves me. I was taking a shower last night, and I was just like, God, I don't know, I have conversations with God in the shower. That's just, <laughs> I was like, God, man, you have always been there for me, you know? And I just, I don't even care about what I did wrong or this or that. I just, God, you love me. That's all that matters. That's it. It doesn't matter who hurt me. It doesn't matter how I feel. God, you love me. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Let's go over here to 1 John 5, 6. 1 John 5, 6, and we'll, we'll wrap it up here. So just a couple verses down. Talking about Jesus here. It says, this is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not only by water, but by water and blood. Important we get that. And it is the Spirit who bears witness because the Spirit is truth. Jesus came by water and blood. Well, what is water? What is the water that he's talking about? In Ephesians 526, and maybe you can interpret this in different ways, but I believe this, this uh, lines up with the rest of the word of God. In Ephesians 5, 6, he, he refers to the word being water. Amen? It's talking about, you know, husbands washing your, your, your wives uh, in, in water by the word. So he refers to the word of God as water. I mean, you know, the, the water is the spoken word of God. Amen? And so Jesus, God tells us he loves us, but God also demonstrated his love for us. Amen? He didn't just talk about it, he was about it. So the water is the spoken word of God, and, and follow me on this, and, and it's by the spoken word of God that faith comes. Right? Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing by the word of God. So the water is the spoken word of God, and by the spoken word of God, faith comes, and when faith comes by hearing God's word, what happens is it leads us to repentance. Because in that chapter in Romans 10, he's talking about salvation. So we hear the word, faith comes, and faith leads us to repentance. But how many of you know that repentance is vanity if not for the cleansing power of the blood? Amen. Amen. What is the point of repenting if we're not going to be forgiven? Praise God. So Jesus is saying, I do love you, but God is saying, my words would be hollow if I didn't demonstrate my love for you. Praise God. Jesus came by water and blood to not only talk about it, but be about it. To where there is a reason now to repent. Jesus didn't just come to talk, but to do, to do the will of the Father, to heal, to show people the power of God, the love of God. Everybody was so messed up, and there's still a lot of messed up people today, and I'm one of them. Amen. <laughs> but people were so messed up in their religious minds. The Pharisees had, had portrayed God as this harsh God who was out to get his people and, and put them down and and God had to send his son to show the people his true, his, him, his true attitude, his true character. Jesus came to heal the sinners, Amen. to save the sick. Amen. Jesus said, whatever I hear the Father say, that's what I say. What I see the Father do, that's what I do. They, when they were trying to crucify Jesus and they were putting him down and making all these fabrications and lies about Jesus to crucify him, the evil people were, the, the religious people were. It was the religious people who, who got Jesus crucified. <laughs> Amen. It wasn't the world, it was the religious people who stirred up the world. <laughs> Amen. And, and so, you know, Jesus went, went through 
went through all of this, and, and uh, they, they were lying about Jesus and making up all, the, all these fabrications. And Jesus said, look, my ministry was not private. Jesus said, I spoke publicly. I worked the works of God publicly. You guys are acting like I did all these things in secret. Jesus says, I was very public with my ministry. Why? Because he wanted to reveal the heart of the Father. He was not trying to make the Father's heart a secret. He says, I am here to reveal the will of God. You want to know what God's will is? You want to know what he wants for your life? Look at Jesus and his ministry. He was always healing, saving, redeeming, forgiving, restoring, strengthening. That was his ministry. The only person he ever put down were the religious people who thought that they were all great and mighty and big and bad. Amen. Amen. Praise God. That was the ministry of Jesus Christ. And, and, you know, love, love without action is like repentance without forgiveness. Amen. And that just goes to show us God is so faithful to us and that he demonstrates his love for us. And God is saying, look, when, when the reason I demonstrated my love is so you could receive my love, so you could pass it on. So you could show that same love to others. Thank you, Lord, because his love is contagious. Amen? Praise God. Praise God. I've got a, um, I want us to go through this, this list really quickly here. And I want to go through, there, there's some indications that, that we can live by and walk by um, that our oil needs to be checked. Okay? Our love walk needs to be checked. Indications. Here we go. Number one, you can be stressed out. If you're stressed out all the time, you need to check your oil. You need to check your love walk. God did not call you to be stressed. I'm not saying that life doesn't get stressful or that there's never an opportunity to get stressed. There will always be opportunities in life to get stressed out. But when you're founded in God's love and you choose to know nothing but Christ and him crucified... Stress vanishes. Amen. Amen. Because you're no longer so concerned about your problems in light of God's love. Praise God. Don't focus on minimizing your problem. Focus on maximizing Christ and his love for you. You do that, and the problems will minimize themselves. You're stressed out. In other words, you know, you're, you're feeling overwhelmed. You feel like you can never get all your ducks in a row, no matter how hard you try. You can never get all your ducks in a row. You feel helpless. That's an indication that we need to check our oil, check our love walk. Not just check our love walk and how we're loving others, but check our love walk. Are we making God's love our foundation? Is his love my everything? Another thing is that everything is so difficult. We feel like everything is so difficult. And, and I just have some words here to use. You know, we feel cursed. We feel... Like everything is just vanity. Uh, we feel like our life is, is futile. Amen? Everything just seems really difficult. When we don't have God's love lubricating our lives, everything is going to seem really difficult. Amen? Um, praise God. When we, start feeling, when we start feeling like everything we do for the Lord is a grind, is a grind, an exhausting grind. You know, there, there is work that, to be done for the Lord, but with grace and love comes a certain rest, a certain rest. There is work for the Lord, but man, when you're resting in his love and grace, it's just, it's different. It's a different kind of work. Praise God. That's exactly it. Thank you, brother. I'm going to have you preach one day, brother Johnny. <laughs> Another indication our oil needs checked, our love walk needs to be checked, is we feel dirty. We feel dirty. And what I mean by that is we're carrying unnecessary burdens. We feel drained. We feel drained. Um, another indication, we feel burnt out. We feel like we can't keep up with life. And I have here, you know, maybe we've, we've added too much into our schedule over the years. We've got too much going on. And we need to simplify some things. Praise God. We need to, we need to get our focus back on track because we've all been there. God doesn't. God's not against you. God's not condemning you if you've gotten off track. But you can get off track very easily to where you just, you just kind of some way, somehow or another, you just get caught up in life. You get overwhelmed by life, and your focus is on the wrong thing. Amen? 
Let's go ahead and stand this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So I'm here to tell you that if one of those indicators is, is reaching out to you, and I'm sure it is. I mean, all of us go through this stuff. And, and all of us need to constantly be reminded of God's love for us. His amazing, perfect love for us. Praise God. Father God, we submit to you this morning. We lift our hands. We raise our hearts to you, God. We submit to you. And we thank you for your love, Lord. We thank you for your love, Jesus. And Father, we just pray that you would help us to always make Christ our foundation, to get back to the main thing, which is Christ and, and him crucified. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If there's anybody in here who doesn't know Jesus, I'm here to tell you, now is the day. Today is the day of salvation. God says, I love you now. His word says, faith is now. There's no better time than now. Now, today is the day of salvation. What's stopping you? If you haven't believed in Christ, you're a sinner. God is graceful and he loves you. There's nothing stopping you except for yourself. Amen? I want to encourage you to bow your knee to the name of Jesus and give in to him, submit to him, entrust your life to him, and you'll never be the same. He's got that big teddy bear behind his back waiting to give to you. It's that teddy bear of forgiveness, that teddy bear of love, true love, passionate love that you've never experienced before. Amen. So if that's you in here and you want to repent of your sin and believe on Christ, I want you to go ahead and raise your hand so we can pray with you today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. I trust everybody's born again at peace in your heart with the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let me bless you before we dismiss today. Thank you, Father. I just speak a blessing over everyone here, Lord. May we experience your love like never before. Any people or things that are hindering us from ex experiencing or knowing your love even more, I just pray, Lord, that you would remove them. Remove them in Jesus' name. Remove those hindrances that we may pursue you and seek you and come to know your love more deeply and intimately. Thank you, Father, for the freedom that your love brings, and I proclaim freedom over this house and everyone in it in Jesus' name that we can go out there and be a light to this world and show them what true love is. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. I love y'all. God bless y'all. Have a great and wonderful week.